Welcome to the Sisterhood of Sweat. Today's guest is Udo Erasmus. Welcome to the Sisterhood of Sweat. I am here today with Udo Erasmus. And I'm going to apologize in advance. <clears throat> I do not know what's going on with my voice, but it's kind of coming and going today. But I am more than excited to welcome Udo Erasmus to the Sisterhood of Sweat today. I take his oils faithfully. So I'm so excited to have the legendary Udo, Udo's oil <laughs> on the podcast. And wow, oh, so many questions I have for him today. He is the legendary pioneer of the health and wellness industry, having created flaxseed oil and the healthy oils fat movement. He is also the co-founder of the Udo's Choice Supplement brand, a global leader in cutting edge health products, selling tens of millions of bottles of healthy oils, probiotics, and digestive enzymes. Erasmus invented the methodology and machinery that created the healthy fats oils industry. Udo's is an accomplished author of multiple books, including Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill. That has sold over 250,000 copies worldwide. He has an extensive education in biochemistry and biology, a master's degree in counseling psychology, and he, he is a speaker at Tony Robbins events. How could you get better than that? <laughs> much better. Oh, and Deepak Chopra's. So he speaks on oils at Tony Robbins and Deepak Chopra's on peace. And he has lectured at conferences on five continents. So this is going to be a treat today. Make sure to tune in and take notes. And I did not want to be a mess. The affiliate link for your body needs and oil change is Udo Erasmus. So you spell that U-D-O-E-R-A-S-M-U-S, UdoErasmus.com slash sisterhood. UdoErasmus.com slash sisterhood, you guys, for your free book. And oh gosh, a bunch of videos and everything where he goes into detail and uh, it's totally so cool that he's giving this to my audience. I wow, wow, wow. Let me just say this was quite an episode with Udo today. Udo Erasmus. I told him it reminded me of the Gladiator movie with Russell Crowe, Maximus, and all these names. And uh, oh, there's so much to this podcast. History, uh, diving deep into your soul. And, you know, how important it is to be connected within and not distracted, distracted by all the noise around you. It was so, so good today. We started off with, let me just get this straight. Uh, I don't want, I'm going to start you off with an Udo's quote. The duty you have to yourself is not about how many things you can acquire but how present you can be in your own space. Udo Erasmus. And he talked about being present, not being absent within. It was so, so good today. We started off just talking about how he was a refugee with his family, how he ever started, how he got poisoned with pesticides, how that he started Udo's, his whole company, you know, creating flaxseed oil. And we get into the flaxseed oil for everybody out there, wh why we might want to take it, why it's good for us. And if you are premenopausal or menopausal, how it can really help you. We talked about good fat, how it heals, and bad fat, how it kills why carbohydrates make you fat. Oh, that, that's a terrible thing to say. I'm sorry, you guys. And 
Let me think. Let me just not miss anything here. There was just so much. I mean, this is a two-part episode. It is power packed. I am so glad at the end I asked him his Tony Robbins story. That alone was a gem. And uh, he speaks at Tony Robbins events. So I could not let that slide by. Uh, we talked about the keto diet and he also for athletes out there, he really dispels the myth about the carb loading before races. And he has study upon study about why the good essential fat will fuel you better and give you longer performance and everything. So this, this is such a power packed episode. My goodness. Um, and, oh, here's another quote by him. I was really enamored by his quotes. We think our accomplishments will get us taken care of. They won't. And, um, oh, I like this one a lot because the other day somebody was telling me, oh, you read too much. You don't need to know that much. And I said to them, I gave them a Bible verse where I was like, well, in the Bible, it says my people perish for lack of knowledge. And so he says, what you don't know can hurt you. Ignorance is not bliss. So I like that uh, that kind of collaborated my little soapbox at boot camp this morning. And let me see if there's anything else. I don't want to forget anything. Uh, oh, gosh, he dispelled the cholesterol myth and told you all about cholesterol, how the body makes it, why some cholesterol is actually good for you, how to lower your cholesterol if it is too high. But, you know, some of what you hear about cholesterol is not all accurate. So... There was so much good. We talked about soy, what his take on soy was to do or not to do. There's so much in these two episodes. Uh, I can't wait to go back just to make sure I digested everything. And I think this will be one where you want to take notes. It's, it's all about all things health. And Udo's is giving a free copy of his book why your body needs an oil change. And I think he's, he listed some other things and I will put this in the show notes. So if you want the freebies that he gives, which was quite a few things, make sure to look at the show notes and it will all be in there. Well, thanks everybody so much. Please rate and review. Let me know how much you like the show. Tag me on Instagram. I really like to know, like, did you enjoy Udo's as much as I did? All right, everybody, without further ado, let's dive into the one, the only Udo Erasmus. Where like, you do know, you if advocate the protein comes from? Oh, you know, if you're, unless you're a bodybuilder on steroids, if you eat only plants, only whole foods, plants, there's enough protein in plants for what you require. In fact, a cow can make a steak out of grass, right? Mm -hmm. That steak that you eat, that you think that you've been told by the meat industry, oh, you got to have that steak. It's not enough protein in plants. It's never been true. A, a cow can make it out of grass. Now, of course, you're not quite a cow, right? Are their, their, their gut is a little longer, but... Elephants eat only grass, gorillas eat only leaves, zebras, horses eat only grass, and there are 300 million Hindus in the Brahmin caste in India that have been obligate ve uh, vegetarians for at least 5,000 years. Don't cheat, never ate fish, never ate fish oil, no steaks, no eggs, no fish, no pork no beef, no mutton. <laughs> and we have bodybuilders who, who are like that. And they have- Yes, stamina. and my friend is, yeah. And they have more stamina than the, the meat guys. You know, the meat guys, the red-blooded guys, they say, yeah, you know, and virility. Actually, the, the plant-based diet is a more virile diet than the, than the meat-based diet. And Where are you getting your B12? And there's and good reason. B12, B12 is a problem now for both vegans and 
meat eaters okay. because the because b12 is made by bacteria in the in the digestive tracts of animals but now we're not feeding them outside anymore so we're so the animals sometimes don't have much vitamin b12 either 49% of the population is is a 49 or 39 uh uh yeah i think it's 39 of the population doesn't get enough vitamin b12 and the best way to know is go and have a doctor measure it and you'll find that they're probably a third of the people who are vitamin b12 deficient are meat eaters oh my goodness that yeah. is a high so, number and it's and and it's not from meat that's what the meat industry says oh they come from animals no they don't they come from bacteria and 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 the bacteria have changed because of the way we mass produce our meat now. And they never came from, it wasn't like meat has it, but plants don't. It depends wow. on what you feed them. So, so this is, it's a big deal. 20, 39% of the population, that's a lot. For vitamin D, it's worse. 60% of white, 75% of Hispanic and 82% of black people are vitamin D deficient. And vitamin D has functions in every cell in the body. And the reason why flu season, cold and flu season is in winter is because we don't get the sunshine. Because we're not getting out, getting the vitamin D cholesterol. outside, yeah. yeah. And now they're saying, you know, we when I, when I started working in this arena, they told us 400 units of D, not more than a thousand, because you can overdose. That's what they said. And now we find out Actually, you can't overdose until you hit 10,000. Well, you get that problem, outside though. Like when you go outside, you get about that many units. Yeah, you probably have to run around naked. You know, this is part <laughs> of you know, our, we've changed everything, right? We I'm live gonna in, tell my indoor, husband. Even, <laughs> even where there's lots of sun, we live indoor most of the time. Oh my gosh. Right? And then we have clothes on. And you know, if you're if you're in a care home, you probably you probably don't get out in the sun almost at all. So you're not getting any made. So they ought to be giving you about five, four to 6,000 units of vitamin D, but probably most care homes don't. And it makes you, uh, it makes you more susceptible to respiratory infections and all kinds of other stuff, cancer and cardio and, and diabetes. Obese people need more because vitamin D is oil soluble. So it gets lost in your fat tissue so then it's not available in your bloodstream. So they need more vitamin D, like about 1.8. If somebody's obese, they need about 1.8 times as much vitamin D as they would need if they were normal weight. Don't you think the best way though to get it is to get outside, to take off your sunglasses, to get a little light on your skin? Oh, for, for sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm all for running around naked on the beach. I am. <laughs> why, why not? There you go. Why not? And especially when you're living in the North. You got it here well, first, we'll be... you guys. You can run around naked <laughs> on the beach. Anytime. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, the, if you're in the North country where you get a, short, a shorter season where you actually can make it, you know, you want to make it and store it up because your body stores it. It's not like vitamin B where you have to eat it every day, every day, every day. You can store it and then live off the storage, but you got to get enough in and that requires skin exposure. Well, as an aside, I'm going to give you a compliment. Your skin looks amazing. And how young are you again? I'll be 79 in May. Amazing. And I have a lot of women in here that are interested in longevity and beauty mm -hmm. and I see like your brain is sharp, your skin looks good. And so are you, you're doing the oils? That's probably a big factor. Biggest deal, yeah. The, we measure optimum intake of, of the oil by how the skin feels. If your skin is dry, you need more oil. Doesn't matter. And in winter, you need more than in summer. And in the North, you need more than in the South, in the, in the tropics. That's just Do you the exercise. That so, would be a question. Yeah. So I, I'll get there in a second. Okay. So, so if your skin is, is soft and velvety, that's how we came up with a tablespoon per 50 pounds of body weight per day. Because your skin gets oil last and loses it first. 
And that's because your heart and your liver and your inner organs, <clears throat> they, if they ran out of oil, that would be lethal but you can live with dry skin. So nature says, look, skin gets it last and loses it first. Skin will only get oil if the rest of the body has what it needs. So by the time your skin is soft, smooth, and velvety, you know that the rest of your body has what it needs. Oh my goodness. Right? And out of that comes the number one feedback we got on the oil over the years. 76% of the people who responded to our surveys ranted and raved how incredible it made their skin. Number one, number one thing makes skin nice <clears throat> because it flows well through the pores and it oils the skin and protects it. I can stay in the sun four times longer when my skin is properly oiled than when it's not. How do I know that? I, I, I measured it in Hawaii. I actually timed it and I got burned, <laughs> but it took four times longer than than it used to take because oil protects you from, from the burning rays of the sun. Dry skin burns much easier. Just, just like dry skin also gets infected more easily. So, uh, so yeah, that's number one. And then the next highest thing after the 76% skin was 34%. So it's like about half. So this, that was far and away the thing that most people, and of course, women more because they're more conscious of that than men are. You know, the, we we brutes. <laughs> <laughs> so what now? Do you exercise? I want to hear about that. Yeah, I I'm active. You know, I'm not I'm not I I'm, I'm not I don't want to be a bodybuilder, but I use a trampoline and I have a chinning bar in my door and I use that and. I go but you probably rock. eat plants, and so you don't really have a lot of fat to burn off. I eat, I eat more plants. I eat mostly whole foods. I eat a lot raw, and I eat mostly plants. So I have perfect. my daughter living with me. She's an escapee from New York, COVID in New York. Uh, she eats some dairy product, um, so I eat a little bit of dairy. But, but when I'm by myself, I'm pretty much plant-based. Now, I would not be doing my job today if I did not ask you to dispel the cholesterol myth. Everybody thinks like they've got to take all this medication out here mm -hmm. to lower cholesterol. And why is that a myth? Well, you can get cholesterol from, from animal foods. There isn't any in plant foods. And, you can, and your body can make cholesterol. Every cell in your body can make cholesterol. Why is that? Because cholesterol is not only useful for regulating membrane fluidity so that the membrane works properly. That's one of its jobs. But it's also the starting material for making bile acids. It's also the starting material for making this famous vitamin D we just talked about. It is required for making the male and female hormones, steroid, hor uh, steroid hormones. And what do they say in, in France? Vive la différence. Right, and uh, and it makes the uh, steroid hormones, the the like cortisone and all of those hormones, mm -hmm. and uh, there there are hormones there for stress, but also for water balance in the body. All of those are made out of cholesterol. So the idea that cholesterol is bad is completely ridiculous. Because if you had no cholesterol in your body, that would kill you. And, and because it would kill you, <laughs> you're set up to be able to make it in your cells out of sugar, out of, out of excess fats and out of excess sugars. And they hook them end to end. You put 30 of them, 30 of them together, and then it forms rings. And then, but there are two issues. One is if you're stressed, you're going to make more cholesterol because it's the starting material for the stress hormones. So your cholesterol might go up when you're stressed. And the second is once you've made this ring structure, your body can't break it down. So there has to be an exit mechanism. And the exit mechanism is the cholesterol goes to the cells, does a job there, whatever it does, it's taken back to the liver. It goes into the gallbladder. It gets dumped into your digestive tract. And then it is supposed to be escorted out into the toilet. But if you don't have enough fiber in your diet, and fiber only comes from plants, 
then up to 94% of the cholesterol that gets dumped in your digestive tract gets reabsorbed into your body. So you lost your exit mechanism. And guess what? If you're making cholesterol, but you can't dump it, then, you, <laughs> then maybe your cholesterol is going to go up. If you go on a plant-based diet, so you, you, you remove the external source, your cholesterol will go down by the old measure, down to maybe 150 to 160. Our standard is like, it was it used to be 180. If you went to 200, then they said you should, should start thinking about taking statins. Now they've lowered that because then they can sell more statins if you, if right. you recommend people take them at lower levels. And the statin interferes with cholesterol production in the body, but it also interferes with coenzyme Q10 production. And coenzyme Q10 is part of the respiratory change that makes energy in your cells. And so people get aches and pains from the statin drugs or they, they feel fatigue from them. And it's, it's why when you take statins, you should also take enzyme Q10. But until, I don't know if that's still true, but for years, the medical profession was not allowed to tell, to tell you that when you take statins, you also need to take uh, coenzyme Q10. I don't know why this is like, that's, that's like completely crazy. So many crazy things. Yeah, yeah, you've noticed a couple. <laughs> that could be a whole nother podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it, it could indeed. So, so the idea of, you know, and then they talk about good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. HDL is supposed to be good. That's the vehicle by which cholesterol goes to the cells. LDL brings it back. And then there's intermediate. So low, low density, high density, intermediate density. And there's a whole bunch of different vehicles in which cholesterol is carried. And most of what we say about good and bad cholesterol is based on the vehicles rather than the cholesterol molecule. Now, doesn't taking good fat help lower your cholesterol? Uh, the omega-3s? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would Those be, particular, they would lower high blood that. pressure. Yeah. They, they can lower high blood pressure. They can lower high cholesterol. They can lower high yeah. triglycerides, mm -hmm. which is the blood fats. And the blood fats come from carbs, mostly. And uh, also CRP, which is C-reactive right. protein, which is an inflammatory yeah. practice. And they also make platelets less sticky. So they actually s help to support cardiovascular health Yeah. in most of the ways that it can be supported. And inflammation, aren't you going to lessen inflammation in the body with taking the good fat? Yeah. Omega-3s are turned into lots of other things in the body. So there's EPA and DHA, which is the brain omega-3, but then they also turn into hormones that regulate functions in the body on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. They're called eicosanoids or prostaglandins, prostacyclins, leukotrienes, and uh, thromboxanes. And then out of one of these, these, the body makes something called protectins, which are very powerful antioxidants and resolvents that are very powerful that resolve inflammation. So out of omega-3s, the body makes very powerful anti-inflammatories in the body and also makes mericins that are, help immune function and also makes endocannabinoids. Endocannabinoids are feel-good hormone and the omega-3s react with proteins in the body and make something that goes on the receptor sites the tetrahydrocannabinol goes on, that when you smoke a joint, <laughs> that, raises your, that raises your mood. And endocannabinoids uh, are mood enhancers. And there's very good research that says omega-3s elevate mood and lift depression if you get the right ones and you take the right amount. Oh, I, I totally so, believe that, yeah. 100%. So it's like, so it's like they, may, they do some... And, and in a way, we're still in the middle of figuring out what all is made mm -hmm. from yeah. omega-3 and omega-6, the two essential ones. Mm -hmm. There's so, there is so much that they do in the body. Every cell, every tissue, every gland, every organ, they have multiple functions. Well, isn't it true that your brain does not make, I mean, like you do not make essential fat in your body and your no, brain you has you to survive on it. Yeah, you cannot make essential fatty acids in your body. 
so yeah. omega-3 and omega-6, the plant-based linoleic mm -hmm. and alpha-linolenic acid, you cannot make those. What the fish oil contains are essential fatty acid derivatives, mm -hmm. but your body can make them if you get enough starting material. The biggest problem in our population is we're not getting enough starting material. 99% of the population doesn't get enough starting material for optimum health. And then if you don't have any starting material, you're not going to do any conversion. But how much conversion needs to be done? This, the fish oil industry says your body can't convert. That's, that is blatantly not true. Because the research has always shown there's conversion. But then the question is, how much do you need to convert? So recently, in 2015, there was a study that measured how much actually is the turnover of DHA in your sizable brain. There's quite a bit of DHA in there. 2.4 to 3.8 milligrams. Milligrams. Oh it's so like one thousandth, one thousandth of a gram, and a gram is like <laughs> nothing. So, you, so, and then if you don't have a source of DHA in your diet, then the body conserves it, and that means it it hangs on to it longer. So the amount you need is really, really small. So the so so the the whole idea is you got you know they used to say when we started when we came out with flax oil that week the fish oil industry started changing all their all their statements to for turf protection they said your body can't convert plant omega threes into fish omega threes the research said different but most people don't read the research right and uh, and and yeah and it turns out that that it was never true. And I've read all that stuff, and it's amazing some of the some of the BS <laughs> in the marketplace. But if understand, you know, they like to call them essential, because you know that if it's essential, you need to take it. So that's great marketing, right? Let's call them essential. But they're actually derivatives of essential, and essential are only the plant ones. And by the definition that the researchers uh, define essential nutrients by. Hmm. So interesting. Yeah. Now, doesn't uh, I mean, I've heard this, so you can tell me yes or no. Um, like taking certain types of oil, like fish oil, uh, help to get rid of arterial plaque, like that some of the plaque that we have in the arteries. Yeah, well, yeah. the plaque comes from inflammation. Okay. Anything that is anti-inflammatory will help. That would include most of the very powerful spices like black seed and cayenne and, and turmeric and ginger and garlic and onions and mustard, and mustard. And let's see, what am I missing? Uh, probably cinnamon a little bit too. Do that. And so they're, you know, so the strong spices from around the world, antiviral, antifungal, antibacterial, anti-cancer, anti-diabetes, anti-cardio, uh, anti-cholesterol, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory properties. So good. Omega threes also have anti-inflammatory properties. The fish oil industry says the only reason to get the plant omega three and sixes is because you need the fish oil convertants. It's not true. In fact, when the study, the only study that was done, that was a big study, they showed that alpha linolenic acid, which is the plant omega three, protects you from a second heart attack from atherosclerosis and inflammation, uh -huh. better than the fish oils do. And the fish oils protected you virtually not at all. Now, if the fish oils weren't so damaged and so toxic with industrial toxins in the ocean or pesticides or whatever, mm -hmm. PCBs, dioxins, if they were fresh and the fish was fresh mm -hmm. and not polluted, fish oil would be very good stuff but they're not, and it's not. Okay, the so- The research now says, well, we, the claims that used to be made for fish oils for like 40, 40 years, when they, when they look at the studies now, <clears throat> the more recent studies are showing that fish oils don't do what is claimed for them. And that's because they've done more and more processing in order to get out the, the toxins- like Overly the, processed. The, the, uh, the, the uh, dioxins, which, were as high as 1,300 parts per billion, 
The government says you have to bring it down to 90. And in order to do that, you have to basically boil the oil because you have to boil, boil those molecules, evaporate the molecules off. And that does more damage to the fish oil. And then they also tried to deal with the, with the, <clears throat> the taste because fish oils really doesn't taste very good. And you get you burp it. And so they, they tried to clean that up. Well, in order to do that, you have to deodorize them or, or steam distill them or white film evaporate them, which is a process of boiling the oil to, to, that's, like, that's like frying them to get rid of those molecules. And then it still doesn't work that well because if you get a little bottle of fish oil and you open it up it, within days, it st starts to smell and taste. Oh, fish. I just, I remember like when my <laughs> dad would have the bat, you know, if it was, oh, it, the smell, I was just like, oh. Yeah. Cod liver oil. Yes, absolutely. We, we didn't want to take it. So my parents would, you know, would just be very patient. They'd hold the spoon uh -huh. <clears throat> and I, and they'd say open and I go, mm like this right <laughs> and so she would just wait on uh no so what she'd do is she'd just hold my nose shut and when i opened my mouth because i now had to breathe through the mouth she'd stick the spoon in <laughs> we had we had daily fights for seven years and one year i loved the oil but seven years we just fought every day and and cried and but freaked. probably back then it was a little better for you well it was better then and and it was the best they knew i mean there's right. a lot Things, a lot of things Perfect. available now that was not a, that were not available. To. I do have a question that is coming to mind about flax oil uh, in menopausal women. It, it's got a lot of estrogen in it. Should we take flax oil when we're in menopause since we're losing oh, this our is estrogen? Like, this is a really cool question. It goes like that: in flax, there is a phytoestrogen. Phytoestrogens are plant-based molecules with estrogenic activity and they are weak estrogens and you find them in the seed virtually virtually none in the oil oh okay because they're water water soluble <clears throat> so when women have high estrogen and that predisposes them to certain kinds of cancer and mm -hmm. certain kinds of high estrogen problems if they take the flax oil and they grind it up and they get those phytoestrogens, mm -hmm. they will compete with the strong estrogens, so they will lower their estrogen level to a better level, to a healthier okay. level. Perfect. But if you're after, this is before menopause, right? Yes. But after menopause. I have both you, listening. Then you're not making it, right? Then you're not making it. Right. So now your estrogen is low. Right. If you eat the flax with the phytoestrogens, you get raised estrogen. So if it's too high, flax will lower it. And if it's too low, flax will raise it. So it gets you benefits both before and after menopause. Perfect. But, it's seed, but you have to do it with the seed and you have to blend the seeds because otherwise you won't get the phytoestrogen. That is it. We are doing flaxseed. I love it. And it is the richest source of those phytoestrogens of any plant on the planet. So why... Uh because I do not do soy. Why should we not do soy or do soy? What is your take? What is your belief? Uh, you know, <clears throat> there's a lot of research on soy that uh, tells you that it, it's, it, has, it does good things. It has, also has some phytoestrogens, not nearly as strong as flax does. Right. There are some people who don't like it, and there are some crazy, some crazy stuff on, on the internet about soybeans and, and soy oil, and that it was made for crankcase oil and for machinery parts oil, and that's all yes. You know, sometimes what happens is really smart people go on the internet, and they read some things and they make some connections, and the connections are completely logical, and they're completely untrue. But you can, you, it's like you sometimes you can see the process and say, well, that's really, that's really creative. That's really, that's really interesting. But when you look into it, it's not true. It's the same thing as like, you know, if you eat fat, you're going to get fat. It's never been true. If you eat fat, you get fat. It's never been true. Because I mean. And, but the logic is there, right? If you eat right? fat, you know, if I'm, if I'm fat, you know, look at them. Mm, In geez, Asian countries. Fat. I must have been eating soy. too much fat. What's Lots that? of soy. In Asian countries, they are doing lots of soy. 
and the women are not suffering from menopausal symptoms near as much. No, as that's true. America. That's true. But they're also more physically active. And I right. think that has something to do with their diet them. is better. They too. also eat more, more basic whole foods. Yeah. You know, so if you're eating donuts, you know, <laughs> white, white, sugar, white flour glazed in white sugar, fried in white oil, uh, probably more likely to American <clears throat> diet. <laughs> you're more likely to have menopausal problems than if you're eating a hunk of tofu, right? Because it's yeah. not it's 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 it is somewhat processed, but they didn't take all the all the good stuff out of it. And then the other one is they 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 tend to be more active than we do, and activity also helps with menopausal problems because the body is made for activity. If you don't have any activity to do, you don't need a body. You could just be a disembodied spirit floating about. Yeah, I right? totally and believe so, in moving. And, and so pe people who are physically active, uh, women who are physically active, tend to have fewer menopausal problems. So I love eat, it. eat in line with nature and, and be active. And that's a good start. Oh my gosh, this has been so good today. I, I mean, this is going to be a two parter. I could have picked your brain forever because once we got into all this, I was just like, oh my gosh, there's more and more and more and more questions. Yeah, but yeah. we are going to give everybody uh, <laughs> access to your book, uh, Why Our Body Needs an Oil Change, and your mini yeah. course. And I will list it in the show notes as well as yeah. at the beginning of the show, I will give you guys yeah. the I'll link. Give you, I'll give you two. One is, one is udoerasmus.com. That's where all the, the learning material is. The other one is called udoschoice.com, U-D-O-S choice.com. That's where we talk about the products that I work with, enzymes, probiotics, oils, uh, and why we do what we do. It, both of them, they're, they're very different websites. This is perfect today. I mean, so good. I just want to just acknowledge you for being so well versed on so many topics. Oh my gosh. Like yeah. I, I didn't know which direction I wanted to take the show yeah. because I felt like we could have went into a deep soul connection. Yeah. So oh, many yeah. good things. Well, we can do that one next time. Oh, so great. So great. Yeah. Oh, oh, before you go, mm -hmm. give me your best Tony Robbins story. <laughs> oh well <clears throat> wow I, I love that you uh speak I, I at tell you, events. I'll tell you what i i'll tell you what i love about him tony has a way of creating a situation for people and he'll have two thousand people twenty thousand people in a situation together but he creates a space in which people can pursue their own growth and their own learning and that's i i would say that's his greatest gift not what he says but that he creates that space for I me to be that. able to do my own learning. So one of them was he he did a he did a and this goes back to my my uh, the children's story. He did a he did a guided imagery and he said okay close your eyes everybody closes their eyes it's, now remember you know just relax and breathe and you know re remember a time when you were five years old where you felt especially loved. And then he said, now remember a time when you were nine years old, where you felt especially loved. When you were 15 years old, when you felt especially loved. And 21, when you felt especially loved. And then I'm sitting there with my eyes closed and I'm saying, I'm looking for finding a time in my younger childhood when I was com felt, com you know, especially loved. I couldn't find one when I was five or nine. And I was shocked because I had never thought about it. So like, oh my God, I cannot remember feeling loved in those days. Mm. And, and so I was sitting there and I was puzzled. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> wow, you know, that's, that's a new one for me, right? Yeah. And, this, and, and as I was sitting there, just like, kind of like really vulnerable and open and surprised, this little bubble started in, on my tailbone. Like it was a, like a little bubble. It wasn't like, it, it felt like a bubble, but it wasn't, I didn't see a bubble. And that bubble sort of went kind of up the inside of the back of my spine 
and got bigger as it got went higher and then got to the top and kind of popped and the words came i do really love you and i completely lost it because it was like oh my god you know something like obviously something loves us unconditionally from inside and i had never experienced that so and then so then i i totally lost it and i i i went home and i cried i literally cried for 24 days you know and then i went to sleep and i wake up cry some more and fall asleep wake up again cry some more <laughs> and in the morning when i woke up this is like a day right in the morning when i woke up tension that i had 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 in my shoulders for at least 30 years and probably that tension went all the way back to childhood that tension was gone and never came back oh that is a miracle wow that That's is amazing, amazing. Yeah, it was like I still so lose glad. it when I still lose it when I say I do really love you. Oh, oh my goodness. I love that so so much. I am so glad I asked you that question. Yeah. That is meat and potatoes right there. I'm sorry. Uh, that is bad. <laughs> uh, After yeah, we yeah, talked it, about meat and potatoes. Yeah, it, yeah, it's really spinach and and broccoli. <laughs> sorry guys. <laughs> I'll have to correct that phrase. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this has been so good. I thank you so much for your time and your expertise and your heart. Yeah. This has been Yeah, and you're you're total fun to Oh, thank you so this much. Week. This has been spectacular today. Thank you so much and thanks everybody for listening to this episode with Udo Erasmus. And make sure you let him know how much you enjoyed this. Go check out all of his oils, his books and everything Udo's. Thanks everybody. Thanks Udo. Thank you. Thank you Linda.